So I've been making a bunch of improvements to the studio, technical upgrades, new lighting in the front, Fresno light in the back, new microphone, sound system, everything. If you like it, let me know in the comment section so I know I don't have to return it. If it sucks, let me know that as well so I can return it and save the money. One of the other improvements I made was to try and purchase fun little doodads to put in the background to keep things interesting. Though with this new camera lens, everything is so soft, you can't really see it anyways. So I'm just left with this thing I ordered. It is a an Etsy produced skull <laughs> uh, made out of resin. It's, it's beautiful, it's made very, very well. It looks realistic, I think. And it, it's just cool, but I don't, I don't know what to do with it. It's just here now. So uh, he's just gonna like sit here on the computer and watch us as we record and stream over on Twitch and everything. And he'll be happy there. If you have a name suggestion, let me know in the comments. I would love to name him. I don't, I don't know what suits him, but let me know. Let me know. Sully? Scully? That could work. Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, speaking of death, let's talk about Elden Ring. So Elden Ring is far and away the most successful game that From Software has ever made, like not even close. Millions upon millions upon millions of new players and old players are jumping into the game and having a fantastic time. Over the course of the last month, it's broken all sorts of records. People are loving this game. But with all of the new players that have come out to enjoy the game, there's also been a bit of a growing pain in the Soulsborne community. And that is specifically that a lot of the older veteran purist players feel like the new players are missing out on the core experience which makes these games so truly special. And that is to go through it without guides, without TikTokers showing you how to build the most OP loadout, without all sorts of cheese strategies for getting past difficult bosses without much trouble. The purist's argument is that those people who are doing that are missing out on what makes these games so great. And I think we can all agree that if you're looking up ways to cheese bosses, you are missing out on the point of the boss, which is that they are difficult and you should find a way to beat them that's not just like, straight up avoiding the entire encounter. Like I have a video I posted on my Luke Stevens Clips channel, I'll have it linked below that you can watch, where I beat the final boss in Elden Ring, a two-phase fight in less than 90 seconds with an extremely overpower build. If you are doing that, you beat the game, congrats. But I think if that's the build you're beating the game with, you are missing out on some of the joy and fun in the game. But that's not really what I want to talk about in the video today. I think we can all agree that that extreme cheese is just not fun to the same extent of overcoming the difficulty. But rather, what I want to talk about today is the idea that the community, the guides, the helpful tips and the, the wikis, everything is actually a major feature of these Soulsborne games. And it's something that the developers over at FromSoft actually intend for you to use throughout your playthrough. It's really simple. I'm not arguing that you should cheese and use completely broken and glitched buildouts to beat bosses or to grind for runes to become overpowered for a boss encounter. What I'm saying is that the community is a feature of this game and it's okay to engage with that community for assistance getting through the game, guiding you to new areas of the map or how to get around this particular blockade, how to find this item to achieve this effect. That stuff is actually a feature of these games and you shouldn't be ashamed of using them. And we're gonna get into all of the specifics with this. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean right after a word from our sponsor. Big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Salad. Salad is the innovative technology company that allows you to earn money with your PC while AFK. Basically how it works is you'll download Salad onto your computer and whenever you're AFK, it will use your computer's hardware to solve complex equations, earning you money in the process. You can earn Amazon gift cards, GameStop gift cards, or Steam credits, or even code for Steam games. I've actually been using Salad since they sponsored the channel a few months ago. I use them all the time, and I even bought the PC version of God of War that I've been playing on with credits I earned through Salad, with my PC right there running whenever I'm AFK because I gotta run up and check on the baby or something. It's pretty cool. And I know this type of thing can usually sound a little bit sketchy, and Salad absolutely understands that, which is why their source code is completely open source. You can check it out yourself to investigate it if you have the resources, or you can look at any of the plethora online reviews that reaffirm that this is 
legit. But as always, you should absolutely do your own research and Salad encourages you to do it. All you gotta do is head to the link in the video description box below or in the pinned comment to check them out today. So the first example I wanna bring up has to do with the Grand Lift of Dectus, which is a big, elevator effectively in Elden Ring, which leads you to the great plateau above the starting area of the game, which leads you to the capital and a lot of the end game areas. Now to operate the lift, you need two items. You need two halves of a medallion. And these two objects are scattered on completely opposite sides of the map. So while a lot of players will have one half of the medallion at this point in the game, when they find the grand lift, most players will not have already discovered the second half of the medallion. And part of the reason this has been done by FromSoft, it seems, is to encourage the player to continue exploring, to navigate through those other areas so that they gain more runes, more XP, level up even further so they're prepared for the capital when they get there. Now there's two philosophies in the Soulsborne FromSoft community right now as to how a player should go about dealing with this encounter. If you reach the Grand Lift and you don't have both halves of the medallion, then you can do one of two things. You can either just leave, continue exploring and try to find the other half blindly with no guidance, just hope you stumble upon it somewhere even though you have no idea where to look, or you look up a guide in the wiki and figure out where you need to go to get that second half of the medallion. Now, I'm actually really curious as to how many people are doing this, how many people are looking up guides or just going organically and doing it, which is why I'm doing a massive survey of all of my viewers and fans through a Google spreadsheet. I'll have it linked below. I also posted it to a community post. So if you want to contribute to that, I'll have it linked below. It'll take just a few minutes to answer, but we're collecting all of this data to see how most people play these games. And I think it's gonna be really, really interesting for the critique that we do on this. But with that being said, I would assume that most players are probably looking up a quick guide to figure out where they need to go to get the half of the medallion they don't currently have. And I don't think that's a bad thing because what they're going to find out is that they have to go to the other side of the map to get the medallion and that it's buried deep within a fort on the coast and it's not going to be that easy to get even though you know where to go to get it. And this is something I realized while playing through Elden Ring specifically is that while From Software doesn't give you quest counters and journals to keep track of all of these different things, they don't tell you with quest markers where to go for certain objects. What they effectively do is they give you just enough information to know what you need to look for, such as seeing, oh, I need a medallion of blah, blah, blah here. And then they let you go about figuring out how to achieve it, how to gain that item, whatever else it may be. In other words, they let the community do the quest giving, receiving, and tracking for them. Because the information you'll receive from the wiki in the case of this medallion is effectively the same exact information that you would get if another game were just giving you a quest objective. It's not a cheat, it's just a rough guide to where you should go. You still have to get past all of the enemies, you still have to kill a bunch of bosses on the way there. It's not easy to get there. It's not like a cheat where you just instantly bypass it. The other way you get up to the plateau if you don't want to go up the Grand Lift of Dectus would be the third option that we didn't mention before, which is going down into the cavern and climbing up through a series of caves and mine shafts all the way up to the top. But this will also have its own challenges because you'll be greeted with many, many, many bosses, difficult enemies, and even a couple of big bosses on your way up. Another example of this where the community effectively becomes the quest guide and counter and journal for the player would be, for example, if you want to build a magic character. It was made very public early on through some early TikToks and videos that went viral that the most powerful spell in Elden Ring is one called Comet Azure. And if you build your whole loadout around this one spell, you can one shot or two shot most bosses in the first half of the game. It's extremely powerful. So what a lot of players were doing is they were looking up where to get this spell and then they received a location on the map that they needed to go to. The thing is, it wasn't just an instant fast travel, grab it and go. On the way there are multiple bosses 
waves and waves of enemies. You have to discover a few map fragments if you want to get there quickly and easily. It's probably a 45 minute to hour and a half process to get up to where that Comet Azure spell is. And even then, it's guarded by a boss who just sits on it and waits for you to arrive. Again, the community's information tells you roughly where to go, just like a quest would, but it doesn't actually help you achieve it or give you any sort of cheats to get there. It's just a quest counter effectively. And the same thing is true for great powerful weapons, such as the Sword of Night and Flame, which recently was nerfed in a patch, I'm told. But uh, this weapon is crazy, crazy powerful if you do a high intelligence build. It, it's just straight up stupid what you can do with this thing. But if you wanted to find it because you saw it was an incredibly powerful weapon, you would look up a guide. They would tell you, okay, it's here inside this area. Climb this ramp, jump down here, grab it, avoid these enemies, blah, blah, blah. Again, just like a quest giver would tell you to go to this area to find this item. And with all of these things, the spells, the weapons, you get there, you get the item. It's not good immediately. You have to still go upgrade it. You often have to respec your character to take advantage of it. Because for instance, the Comet Azure spell takes like 60 intelligence, I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. Yeah, it takes 60 intelligence and costs 40 mana. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> You, you are going to have to respec your character if you want to use this Comet Azure spell. And even then, you're going to have to do some extra work to make sure that it is performing fully so that it can one-shot those bosses, which probably means that you're not going to have very much health or stamina. You're not going to be able to do much of anything else other than cast this one spell that's really powerful. If you get touched by anything on the way to the boss arena, you're screwed. And all of this kind of opened my eyes. I'm trying to be much more considerate and less of like a try-hard elite prick when it comes to Elden Ring and these types of games because more players than ever are trying these games and having a great time while doing it and I think we should welcome new players into these communities and have a great time with them just because they're looking up a guide to find a powerful weapon to make the game a little more approachable and accessible doesn't mean that they're are just not even enjoying the same game you are. It doesn't mean that they're having a terrible time or that they've ruined the experience for themselves. Often, it's just providing them a little more guidance than the game gives by default. And my whole point with all of this is that this is such an obvious thing that happens with so many players. It seems obvious to me that FromSoft is aware that players do this and are totally okay with it. If the team over at FromSoft didn't want players having guides telling you where to find certain of these items, they would just make them dynamically drop. So much like in other games with tons of different weapon loadouts, you weren't guaranteed to get, say, Comet Azure in that one spot every single time. You would go to that spot and it has a likelihood of dropping every once in a while. Or you go over here and in these grade of chests these sometimes drop items of this quality and you go through the game like that but the developers haven't done that because they want you to be able to rely on certain areas for certain items they want you to be able to go here find these things every single run not only does it help the speed running community but it helps players on subsequent runs who want to build their characters in a very specific way it's just clear to me that the developers don't have a problem with these guides taking players and giving players information on where to find these things because if they did have a problem with it and if they thought this was spoiling the experience in such an egregious way like a lot of purists argue they would have done something about it with a simple fix of making these extremely powerful weapons and spells more dynamic making them drop randomly at random spots or just straight up locking them behind certain boss encounters where the only way you can get Comet Azure is if you actually defeat the boss that's guarding it but that's not what they did they put Comet Azure behind the boss so you can run around the boss grab it and continue along your merry way these things are all very very intentional and you need to ask why that is there are some weapons locked behind boss encounters you will only get them if you beat the boss but that's not true of all of the weapons and in fact most of the most powerful weapons in the game at least at launch with an Elden Ring were weapons you could 
find and discover out in the world without taking on the bosses, which to me just suggests that it was from software's way of offering an olive branch to new players. So if they were really having trouble with bosses, they could go find these powerful tools and assets and get past the boss encounters in their own way. Sure, it's not as impressive, it's not as admirable as somebody who goes and does a no armor, zero hit run through the game, but they're still having a good time with the game. And guess what? With these new players, they get through the game with Comet Azure and the Sword of Night and Flame, and they're just two-shotting bosses all the way through. And like my crazy OP build that I experimented with on stream, they beat the final boss in 90 seconds. Guess what? They're gonna feel really good. And then they're going to go and play the game again. And guess what? They're probably not going to use that same crazy OP build. They're going to be like, you know what? I'm looking for a challenge. Let's go through it again. New game plus, but I'm going to totally change up my loadout. I'm going to try to use a great sword, a colossal great sword. Let's go. And they're going to do it. And that's how this starts. The only thing that this really achieves at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, is it makes these games more accessible. The hardcore runs are still very achievable, still very doable for fans of these games that want to do that. But the game is also accessible to new players who can look up guides, assistance from the community, get through the game a little easier, and then they can go back through subsequent runs and try it in the purest form. All of this to say, the wikis, the guides, looking up assistance for finding items, spells, everything. I don't think you should be ashamed if you're doing that. I think I'm just glad that you're playing the game and having a good time. I encourage you to try different weapons. I encourage you to try to go through another run, a subsequent run, without guides and without assistance from the outside. See if you can manage that, because if you can, it'll be really, really satisfying. I highly recommend it. But... Don't be ashamed if somebody uh, it like looks at your video of you beating a boss with a strong spell and they're like, oh, OK, well, oh, you use summons. OK, get out of here. Easy mode pleb like uh, that. Also, just side point sidebar. That's so stupid. Like Hidetaka Miyazaki openly said that summons were a major part of character build outs and that everybody should be using them like this was a main staple gameplay mechanic that they put into this game so for people to just not be using it and then complain about how hard the bosses are is just really really funny and extremely stupid to me that's my own opinion though but i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you think of all of this stuff with elden ring in the comment section below thank you again to our sponsor salad for making this video possible and again if you want to contribute to this data collection of elden ring make sure to leave uh your input in that google form that i'll have linked below i would really appreciate your feedback and don't worry after all of the data has been collected i'll be sharing the results so you can peruse it at your own pace if you would like to do that but with that said, I'll see you over on Twitch or on Monday for the next part of the Ghost of Tsushima Critique. I love you all very, very much. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.